Hey, Bible lovers, I got together with my friends, Tim Wildsmith and Tim Frisch. We had a great time. We did a three-part video. On the first part, we kind of tell our testimonies and the stories of how we entered ministry and even how we kind of slipped into Bible reviewing. We also, in Tim Wildsmith's section, we take on our favorite upcoming releases. He's actually going to drop a video of that little section uh, probably next week. And in the third section, we took questions, and some of the questions were pretty amazing, and we really had a great time answering those questions. We ultimately ran out of time, didn't get a chance to get to all of them, but it was a lot of fun. Check out my portion called We Three Tims. This is our story. Some folks on my channel have been asking about being a little more personal and not just talking about Bibles, but actually talking about our stories. So uh, that's going to kind of be the segment I'm going to cover because, you know, what's your background? Uh, where'd you come from? How'd you become a Christian? And when you became a Christian, how did you get into ministry? Because I know both of you all do some level of ministry. Um, Wildsmith, we're going to have to go by last names because if I say Tim, it's going to be confusing. <laughs> Wildsmith is actually teaching at a college now, like a campus pastor. So we'll start with you. How did you get where you are today? And how did you get to the place where you came into ministry? Yeah, that's a that's a great question. Um, I was actually same thing, uh, Nichols. I I I recently did a review of the the Be Thou My Vision uh, lit liturgical daily devotional from Crossway, and I kind of shared a little bit of my about my background in that video, and a lot of people seem to like that, and you know, like yeah. hearing a little bit more. So, um, you know, I grew up. Uh, mostly in Omaha, Nebraska. My, my dad was in the corporate world, so we bounced around a little bit, but I grew up in a Christian home and my parents really made it a priority to, to get me and my sister into a good church where the Bible was preached and where they had good kids ministry. So, I mean, I, I um, became a Christian when I was seven or eight years old and got baptized. We were at a, a Baptist church at the time. And, you know, it was always part of the programs like Awana when I was a kid and then going to youth group in junior high and high school. And, um, so when I was a, I really first got into ministry, my sophomore year of college, I, I started attending a local church here in Nashville as a Belmont student. And one of my mentors had been my small group leader in high school. And so I went to the youth pastor at the church and said, um, Hey, I'd like to volunteer to be a, a small group leader. And they said, Hey, come on, we'd love to have you. So I started being a small group leader. And then it was during that time that they said, Hey, we, you can play guitar, right? Would you lead worship for us one night? And I, I randomly started leading worship at that church for the youth group. And that put me into like a decade of worship leading uh, as a profession. Um, I, I finished Belmont, moved back to Nebraska. My youth pastor hired me. So my first full-time job was at the, the church that I mostly grew up at. And I was one of the, the worship leaders on staff at the church and doing youth ministry. Um, and then I went to another church and was their worship leader for about four years. It was part of the Acts 29 network. A lot of people heard about that. It was kind of a new hip thing yeah. uh, back then. Um, that yes, that podcast last year gave me some PTSD, but um, I loved all the guys that I was in church with. I didn't have a lot of bad experiences or anything. Um, so it was really worship leading was my early ministry and um, I, throughout my 20s. And then I reconnected with Becca, my wife, in 2011 and moved back down here to Nashville and um, spent about three years in the music industry because I knew a bunch of people who worked in the music industry. I traveled with a, a Christian rock band called Cutlass for a couple of years, and I did merch and guitar teching. I was a tour manager for a couple of other bands. So I was on the road in the music industry and really started to miss worship leading in particular and being in the local church. Um, and so back in like 2013, 2014, uh, randomly, I started leading worship again at that church that I led worship at as a college student. But now it was like, you know, 10 or 15 years later, um, it was a Baptist church here in Nashville. And after about a year of leading worship, they were doing a youth pastor search. And just because I was around, they said, hey, would you be our interim youth pastor? And I was like, I I'm not really a pastor. I'm a, I'm a musician. And they were like, well, we think you'd do a great job. And so I decided to become their youth pastor temporarily in an interim while they did the search. And then the search kind of honed in on me and they ended up offering me the job. So I was a full-time youth pastor for uh, almost six years at a church here in Nashville. Um, and during that time, I decided to go to seminary. I, I mean, one of the things I've said on my channel is that as I was doing ministry and it wasn't just music anymore, it was, you know, shepherding people and, and teaching teenagers. I really wanted to deepen my well, so to speak, when it came to the Bible in particular. And so um, I enrolled at Fuller Theological Seminary in 2016. 
Um, I left that church in 2019 and went full time to seminary. So I finished at Fuller in 2020, kind of right after the pandemic began um, and kind of was doing a, a lot of different stuff. That's when I started Bible Review Blog, just because I was a little bit bored because I didn't have a job and I had some downtime as I was finishing seminary. And um, then about a year ago, uh, my friends at Belmont reached out where I went to college and they have a whole campus ministries department where they basically have college pastors on staff at the university, not just instead of being a college pastor at a church, you're like a college pastor at the university. They do chapel and discipleship programs, Bible studies, mission trips, all that stuff for the university. Um, and so kind of similar to, to the, similar to the, the youth pastor gig, I, 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 um, I started out in an interim job, just kind of helping them out because they needed some help. And then just a few weeks ago, they offered me a full-time job. So, um, my title is Director of Faith Formation and Student Engagement. So it's really discipleship programs for students and helping out with the chapel program and just kind of being a, a, a college pastor, um, pastoral care on campus for our students and even our faculty and staff. And Becca and I are, are also plugged in at a, a local church here in Nashville um, as their worship leaders, us and another couple kind of trade off um, leading worship for them. So, um, yeah, so I, I really do see. Bible review blog cause it kind of as an extension of all of that, you know, local church ministry, um, love of worship ministry, really spending time in seminary, focusing on studying the Bible and getting to know the Bible and all that. And then now, you know, the goal, so to speak of Bible review blog is to help people find a Bible that's right for them, which has been really, really a fun process. So I see it as something fun for me to do, to check out Bibles and to be on YouTube and to create, you know, fun content, but also, um, to have a ministry. So, uh, that's kind of my story is of, of, you know, ministry track, um, several, that's one, two, three, four or five different local churches that I've served on in some capacity in like a, a paid staff position. And then now at Belmont as a kind of a college pastor. So it's been really fun and it's actually spring break this week. So it's a little bit quieter uh, around, uh, around, but it's, it's been nice to kind of dive in and college students are, are real fun and real interesting and, and there's a yeah. lot going on. So it's been fun to, it's different than working at a local church where it's kind of like more of a narrow stream, so to speak, where, you know, you're all kind of moving in the same path at a college university like level. It's, there's a lot going on. There's a lot of moving parts. There's a lot of people, you know, Belmont is not a um, denominationally affiliated Christian school. And so there's people from all walks of life and all spectrums of faith. And so we're trying to create a place for everybody to come and deepen their faith um, and be college students. So it's, it's been, I do, as you, as you said, uh, Nichols, I, I do get to teach a couple classes. Like I teach the, the youth ministry class for, um, the college of theology at Belmont and I might be teaching some other classes in the future. So I get to do a little bit of everything. It's really, really fun. Cool. So just, just real quickly, uh, how does you now having this demanding job, how do you feel that's going to affect your, your channel or at all? That's a good point. Um, last couple of weeks, it's been really, really busy at work. And like, I, I didn't get to get to all the videos that I wanted to. Um, but, but I do have some, some flexibility in my schedule, um, and, and hoping to kind of keep up with things. I've got, I've got a to-do list, you know, of the Bibles I want to review and the fun videos I want to create. So I'm trying to trying to keep up with it as much as possible. Um, so I, I, I've been doing this, for seven or eight months going to Belmont almost every day. So I don't, I don't think it'll make a huge change. I'm going to try to keep it up, but yeah. Right. right. All right. Well, Frisch, tell us your story. how did you get saved? How did you get into ministry? And how did you end up on YouTube talking about uh, hot top? <laughs> oh man. Yeah. Someone asked in the comments, is this going to be about J Mac today? <laughs> and I want to answer that right now. That is not going to be our topic for today. Uh, we're going to steer clear of that topic. We're just talking about our, our own journeys, and we're talking about Bibles, Bible reviews, that sort of thing. But we're, we're not going to talk about anything that controversial. Yeah, see, here's the thing. I came from a fundamental Baptist background. My dad was a church planter back in the 1970s, and he planted a church in Trenton, New Jersey. He was originally from Florida. That's where my parents are from. They moved up to the Northeast. Uh, I live in New Hampshire now. And if you uh, live in New Hampshire, which is pretty far north, uh, they don't exactly consider New Jersey part of the Northeast. But uh, if you're from Florida, 
they don't consider New Jersey South by any means. So nobody really wants to claim New Jersey. Uh, but where, when my dad was looking to plant a church in the 70s, the, uh, it just you know, was apparent to him that New Jersey really needed a good gospel influence, needed churches. So he planted a New Testament Baptist church in 1975. I was born in Trenton, New Jersey in 1979. And uh, I grew up in that church plant environment where it was a, a pretty new church. And uh, it was actually, you know, very healthy church and a really wonderful experience. So my personal experience in the fundamental Baptist church was, was not a negative one. However, uh, you know, on the large scale, I think that fundamentalism has definitely had problems. And so part of my journey, you know, I got saved. My, my parents led me to the Lord when I was six years old. And then uh, I was baptized when I was eight years old. So I came to faith at, a, at quite a young age and never really outwardly, you know, strayed in any way. But I've always had a lot of internal things that I've really grappled with, you know, in my faith and in my understanding. And that's, thank you for holding up the mug, because that's where I... Uh, <laughs> that's where I really, I, I feel like over time, uh, I did ministry for quite a few years getting out of Bible college in 2001. I was at uh, a, a Baptist church in Claremont, New Hampshire, where I live uh, on staff for about 18 years. Um, but uh, I really felt the Lord leading me more to outreach type ministry and interchurch ministry. And I've also had other theological training since my undergrad. So with all of that, I just feel like my journey has led me to experience a lot of different types of Christians and have a lot of theological discussions from different backgrounds and uh, also trying to be evangelistic, trying to share truth with people, trying, trying to share the gospel with people. And all of that just has led me to say, yeah, I want to I want to be part of something where I can really express what I believe from my heart, but also I hope have dialogue with people and, and get their feedback. I feel like conversation is so important, especially in our day. So on my channel, I, I do talk about controversial issues, but it's not to say, here's the right way that everybody must think. It's more to say, hey, I know this is something we're all thinking about, or hopefully we're trying to think about it in, in a biblical way let's talk about it. Yeah. So that's, that's where the controversy stuff comes in. But, you know, even off the bat, my channel grew very, very slowly. Nobody really wanted to hear, uh, you know, this guy uh, from New Hampshire. Uh, but uh, when I started uh, doing Bible reviews, people were interested in that because, you know, they love the Bible and they're interested to see about, especially these really nice premium Bibles. So that's actually, that actually helped my channel start to gain an audience when I started reviewing Bibles, but it's just a piece of the pie for what I do in Bible reviews. But um, yeah, that's pretty much my story. Yeah. And just uh, as distinctly as I can tell it. <laughs> first of all, uh, I just, I just want to talk about real quickly how both of you do a phenomenal job at what you do. Um, you know, Tim, Tim Wildsmith from more of a strict Bible review perspective, although he took on tattoos once, which is a beautiful video. If you have not watched Tim Wildsmith's video covering tattoos, you need to go and watch it. It's, Thanks, it's a super incredible video. And uh, Frick, um, just what he does beyond Bible reviews, you're one of the very few people that kind of got stuck in that Bible review niche that managed to get their way out of it and still be successful as a reviewer. Um I know that I've dabbled in things outside of it and it's, it's flopped. Um, and I know even like a wildsmith, a lot of the stuff that he posts that isn't Bible reviews, it doesn't do as well. Um, but you know, you have managed to find that spot to where you've really truly in my mind become an influencer not just a Bible reviewer to where you are influencing culture and really making a difference. And it's just incredible to partner with you all and watch your content and really support and champion your content because it's what, what y'all are doing is a big deal. Yeah, can I uh, can I interrupt you there, Tim? Just to say, uh, sure. sorry, I, I just I, I've said this to Tim Frisch privately, but I would love to say it publicly. Like that that heartbeat of of recognizing that everyone has a perspective and that we can have healthy dialogue about it. I that's one of the things I love the most about your channel 
uh, Tim Frisch, is that you really do. You talk about things, but you're always welcoming, and your place, your channel is a place where people can have disagreements and talk about things, but they can do it in a respectful way, and that we don't call each other heretics when we disagree with them. Right. And I, I definitely think our world is so polarized, and I often see so many Christians attacking one another. And and I'm with you on that, man. I just I I want to I want to give you credit for doing that on your channel. I think it's a good testament to to all of us to to recognize that somebody who I didn't grow up in that same context that you did. So I'm naturally going to see the world with a different set of eyes and a different perspective and a different context background than you are. And that doesn't mean that you're wrong and I'm right. Um, we can have a nuanced conversation about things and we can recognize that people see things differently than us. And I love that your channel does that. And I, and I, I wish that, I think the world is a world of hot takes and really extreme opinions. And, you know, you get views by disagreeing and being loud. Um, I love that your channel gets views in a way that's not that. So I, I, I really appreciate you, man. Yeah. Oh, and that's very kind of you. Thank you. And uh, just to kind of poke at Jason Whitaker, uh, Jason Whitaker tries to pull Frisch out of that little safe zone every now and then and pull him <laughs> in. It's it is fascinating to watch those two work together because, you know, Jason is very direct and very opinionated. And and, and I know Frisch is as well, but he tries to keep it in neutral. You know, he tries to, okay, let's put this back <laughs> into the middle here. And it is so, uh, Jason, great. you poke in that bear because that is fun to watch. You got something, Tim Frisch? Oh, let me just quickly say that I, as you're talking about, you know, this stuff with, with my channel, I, I must say that inwardly, I, there's a part of me that feels bad when it comes to Bible reviews. Uh, especially, I feel like my channel is a, a hodgepodge of different things. And I feel a little bad sometimes for the, uh, the publishers, because if they send a Bible to just a review channel, it's just a review channel. And that's, that's really good. I, 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 there is that struggle. So I hope that I'm handling topics in a way that doesn't distance any one group too much, you know, because I can imagine that it's, it's gotta be a little bit weird if you're saying, okay, we're going to send this guy a Bible and it's <laughs> our product, but then who knows what he's going to be talking about on Wednesday, you know, yeah, it's kind of weird. So. You strike a good balance. I mean, I, absolutely. I, we've made that real clear, and, and it's 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 definitely appreciated. Uh, so, so my story is going to be very different than the two of yours. Um, I grew up in a non-Christian household. I grew up in a biker slash drug slash alcoholism. Uh, fell into that same trap. Um, by the time I was in high school, I was smoking dope, selling dope. Uh, you know, doing all the wrong stuff. And it was what I was trained to do. It was what my family did. It was the, it was our reputation in the West end of Louisville. And uh, I don't want to say too much because this is live and, and I don't want to dishonor my family, but it, it was definitely a rough upbringing. And uh, when I turned 18 is when things really spun out of control. Um, I got in a cussing match with my mother back and forth and threw me out of the house. Of course, who wouldn't? And uh, when I came back home to kind of get my stuff, it was already stuffed in my car, spent the next six months homeless, uh, sleeping behind a bar. Uh, it was, it was, and this isn't a sad story. This is a great story, but you know, our, our journeys are all different. And I, I went through about three years of that, um, going into apartments and uh, different friends that would turn me on to different drugs and different things. And, and I was to a place in my life where I read the book of revelation. I don't know who starts in the book of revelation. This guy starts in the book of revelation. Why I started in the book of revelation. I have no idea, but I was searching for answers. I watched the movie thief in the night. Um, if you've heard of the movie, a thief in the night, then let me know in the comments uh, with the weird seventies hippie music and, and all that stuff going on. I watched that. It freaked me out. Turn me to the book of revelation. And I was a Catholic at the time. And uh, many of you know that I review Catholic material, Orthodox material. I try to really be balanced and all that, but I am no longer a Catholic. I've made that abundantly clear. There are things in that vein that I have disagreements with, but I don't try to be controversial or angry about it. But anyhow, at that time, the Catholic Church simply was not where I felt I fit. So I started looking for answers and uh, just trying to find how do I get free from this life? How do I get free from this torment? Started having tormenting dreams. Uh, about the return of Christ, things I didn't even know about. And uh, I wanted, I wanted peace. 
So I started like keeping Lent and doing the fasting and eating fish on Fridays and, uh, you know, doing good deeds and working at soup kitchens and just nothing was working. It was like, okay, I cannot do my way out of this thing. I, I need to find out what needs to happen. And then that's when I ran into someone at my workplace that uh, basically gr- guided me to a church. And this church uh, took me about three Sundays, but for the first time, I heard an adequate presentation of the gospel in my life. I understood what it meant to be a sinner. I understood what it meant to need salvation. I understood what it meant to be, I can't help myself out of this. I understood that someone had to die in my place. It was like all that was presented to me. And I was like, this is it. And I went to the altar and the guy prayed with me. He had a blonde mullet. His name was Phil Chapin. Um, just in case anybody's wondering, had a blonde mullet. Um, so yes, I was led to the Lord by a guy in a blonde mullet and had a transformation that day, instantly delivered from drugs, instantly delivered from alcohol, instantly delivered from several things that were uh, holding me back. I mean, it was just, it was an instantaneous change. This is not normal. Um, most people, they, it's a graduate process. And of course there were other things that I had to wrestle through, but I'm talking about drugs, alcohol, and primarily sexual sin was just like, that desire was gone went home, threw away all my stuff. And about four months later, the pastor told me, now pastors, I don't recommend this. The pastor told me, I've been looking for a youth pastor and uh, I want you to consider it. Now, keep in mind, four months saved, just married, um, had recently got married. So I had not been a Christian 11 months. So there was like a, 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 about a seven month training process that the pastor took me through, through some schooling and some, through some discipleship. And by April, which I got saved in July, and by April of the next year, I was a youth pastor. And again, pastors, <laughs> don't follow this model. This normally doesn't work. Um, it did work for me. And I was at that church for four years, really saw some great things happen. Went to a little town called Burksville, Kentucky after that, became a full-time youth pastor for the first time. And that's really where I learned. Burksville was where it's a little bitty town. I had to slow down, couldn't be as busy. No one was as in big a hurry as they were in Louisville. And I really learned ministry. I learned how to shepherd and take care of students. And I was there for seven years. And that's when God brought me to Elizabethtown, Kentucky, which is where I'm at now. I was a youth pastor there from 2006 until 2009. Then an opportunity to pastor the church came up and somebody asked me to throw my hat in the ring. And I did. And there was, there were some rough patches, but I eventually became the pastor and, uh, that's kind of where I'm at today. I'm pastoring Lakeside E-Town, uh, really enjoying life, really enjoying my family. I've got four kids and love all four of them and just uh, excited. Um, I have a great wife, great life, great family. And then how I became a reviewer, that's an interesting story because it was completely by accident. I didn't know that there was such thing as Bible reviews. No idea. I wasn't really tuned into YouTube. Um, and unless you're looking for Bible reviews on YouTube, you're really not going to find them. It's not like they're going to show up on your feed randomly. So uh, a, f- a friend of mine and I, we found this strange book called the Sefer or Sefer, as some people call it. It has a bunch of extra books and it was just weird. So we made a video on it. I was like, we're going to make this video. And next thing you know, like two days later, it had like 1500 views. It was like, whoa, th- th- people are interested in this. So then my buddy was like, well, I wonder what happened if I just call a publisher and say, hey, we just made a video, got 1500 views, we're building. And he contacted Crossway. And Crossway hooked us up with like three Bibles. And I was like, you mean they do this? So then I'm like, okay, wait a minute. How do you do Bible reviews? So then I typed Bible reviews in the YouTube search engine. And I found the legend, Randy Brown. And I took in as many of his videos. Then I found Bo Tate. Took in as many as his, his videos. Bible believing Christian, Cat Wood, started taking in those videos. And I was like, okay, so now I have a format of how to do it. And then my friend and I made a channel. He eventually moved to Ohio. I started my own channel. I was like, I want to be different. I don't want to do what everyone else is doing. So I made a play off my last name, which there seems to be someone I know that has done that before, that made a play <laughs> off my last name. And I decided five minutes was my format. I've had people try to pull me out of that. I wish you would do this. I wish you would do that. I'm like, there are dozens of reviewers that cover a plethora of content. If you want details, go to our Grant Jones. Dude makes like hour and 15 minute reviews. You know, so... Uh, but there's everybody in between the spectrum. And that's just kind of where I landed. It is a joy to do what I do. And it's really uh, exciting to be a person that people actually care about your opinion. Uh, who knew? So that's kind of my story. 
That's a fantastic awesome. story, man. Thanks for sharing. That's yeah. incredible. I mean, and praise God that you were able to turn your life around like you have. Hey, oh my goodness. I'd probably be dead by now, to be honest. So I, I actually kind of fell into Bible reviews too. The, the very first Bible review I ever did was kind of random because the Bible showed up and it was not what I was expecting and I couldn't find anything on it. So I made something and it ended up being the first Bible that Crossway produced in China. And I was like the first person to, to have anything on it. And so people flooded to that video to talk about how much they hated it. And, you know, I got that, that dopamine hit of, Oh, people like my chain might like my video. I should make more of these. So it's kind of a fluke that I started doing it, you know, by there the way, this is producing a new CD, correct? I am working on new music. Yeah, I have, uh, I have, I, I recorded two songs. It's only two songs, but the first one is coming out very soon. And uh, the next one, I'm going to save a little bit. I'm going to kind of tease it out. But yeah, I've got some new music coming as well. Yeah. Awesome. So I hope you enjoyed that video. If you want to watch the entire thing, there's a link in the video description down below. Go ahead and click on that. It'll take you to Tim Frisch's channel where there's about an hour and nine minutes of content. Some amazing things happen. During Tim Wildsmith's section, he thinks I drop a top secret Bible that no one's supposed to know about. You can see him get really uncomfortable and squirm. It's a funny moment. And then during Tim Frisch's section, you see Tim Wildsmith react to my biceps which is kind of a funny moment as well. And uh, it's just a really great overall fun time. So anyhow, check it all out. Also, if you want to see Tim Wildsmith's section, then he'll be posting that next week. Just make sure you support all three of us because we all work very hard to bring you great content. God bless you. Keep calm. Jesus on.